Today, it's the first trading day of September, and because every day is the same during the pandemic, tech stocks are still winning. Plus, how the bond market feels about the so-called death of New York City. And finally, people need cars, and used ones are just fine for now. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. It's the same old story on Wall Street today. Tech stocks led the market higher. The Nasdaq closed at a fresh record high, and so did the S&P 500. The Dow rose by 216 points, or 0.8%. The big movers and shakers? Well, we had Apple, which rose 4% one day after its 4 for 1 stock split went into effect. Investors ate up the stock at a cheaper entry price. Walmart shares jumped more than 6% after it officially launched its competitor to Amazon Prime, but more on that later. Shares of video chat company Zoom shot up more than 40% after it reported yet another blowout quarter. And Tesla? Well, it actually dropped 4.7% on headlines that it will sell up to $5 billion of its own stock a day after its 5 for 1 stock split went into effect. Now that's just a drop in the bucket for Elon Musk and his electric car empire. The stock is still up a staggering 467% for the year. So that's the stock market, but what about the bond market? The municipal bond market to be specific. Now, when we say the municipal bond market, what we're talking about is how cities and towns across the United States turn to investors to fund things like long-term public transportation projects, infrastructure upgrades, and other things that regular taxes can't cover. The bond market can offer a window into how investors perceive risk over long periods of time. And a recent $1.1 billion bond sale from New York City reveals how investors feel about the debate over the so-called death of the Big Apple as residents flee to the suburbs because of COVID-19. Here's CNBC's Robert Frank to explain more. So the big question about New York City is just how bad are its financial problems and how bad will it get? And it turns out we have a pretty clear answer from the investment world in the muni bond market. And this is where investors buy bonds that are essentially loans to a city. And the, where those bonds are priced tells us a lot about the risks that those investors see. Now, before COVID, New York City had a spread, in other words, the difference between its bond and the benchmark of about 30 basis points. So that means it was a very safe investment. But after COVID, last week, New York City sold about a billion dollars worth of bonds. And the spread on those bonds, in other words, the risk, more than doubled from pre-COVID levels. So what that tells us is investors now see New York City as twice as risky as it was before COVID. Now, the other added layer here is that New York City is asking permission from the state to sell $5 billion more worth of bonds. And if that happens, there will be such a huge supply adding to the $38 billion that the city already has out there, is already stuffed in people's portfolios to sell. And it might be really hard or certainly harder to sell that $5 billion than it was to sell the billion last week. So what does it all mean? Well, it means that New York City's cost of borrowing could increase, which means that more of its budget, which is already under strain, will be devoted to paying down its existing debt, which could cause it to cut services, cut employees, which makes it less attractive to live there, which means that there could be fewer people in New York City, which could cause a reduced tax base and perhaps even further financial problems. So it creates this downward spiral that the bond market is telling us right now is not a crisis, but is certainly a concern. And now let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say on CNBC's airwaves.
I can tell you that we're trying to do it. It has nothing to do with November 3rd as much as it has to do with, with September 30th, October 30th, November 30th. You know, we're, we're trying to make sure that what we do is get a vaccine to the American people as quickly as possible. Uh, and whether it comes out before the election or before the end of the year, uh, it, will, it will come out in record time. And it's all about trying to help the American people as quickly as we can. The fiscal cliff we face here is large, that you'll see a big drawdown if they don't extend the fiscal benefits that are necessary. So that's a big deal. And 500 would create a very significant cliff. So to us, this, our kind of estimate of what would continue to sustain the economy in the way that it's been going is somewhere in the 1.3 to 1.7 kind of range. We speak with a lot of long-only investors who are not particularly inclined to chase the stock over here, given that they didn't like the stock $100 or $200 ago. And then when you when you think about the alternatives, there are companies that are growing at a faster pace, that have good free cash flow profiles, that have higher margin structures, that are trading at valuations not very dissimilar from Apple, so uh, or even cheaper in certain instances. So we, we stand with our valuation call. I had to pick between in-person physical teaching and uh, the best technology on the planet. I would pick the in-person physical teaching with an amazing teacher any day for my kids or anyone else's. Uh, and I think the difficulty here is, uh, you know, we've been treating this in the school system like a series of rolling two-month crises, but this could very well be through the end of the school year. And, you know, depending on what happens with the vaccines or the therapies could even be uh, next school year. And uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of school districts haven't had the chance to really think through what instruction looks like in this world. Well, we indicated coming into the quarter that we really expected strong growth to continue into Q2. And we saw that across all geographies, all industries. Um, you know, international grew over 600% year over year. We strong, saw strong, strong, strong performance in industries like education and nonprofits and also Zoom phone. We're very excited. We had our largest Zoom phone deal to date signed in Q2. So really strong performance across all aspects of our business. It's really hard to buy a car in America right now. Auto manufacturers and factories around the world had to shut down production thanks to COVID-19. And that in turn led to a nationwide shortage of new cars here in the US. Not to mention that during times of economic crisis and massive unemployment, people tend to tighten up their spending, making new cars that are available out of reach for the average buyer. So people started turning to more budget-friendly used cars, and then those vehicles began flying off of dealership lots. Plus, the used cars still on offer became a whole lot more expensive. The average listing price for all used vehicles increased about $700 from June to July, according to car shopping website Edmunds. So anyone who wants to buy a car right now is most likely going to find fewer choices at higher prices with basically no leverage to negotiate, making it kind of a great time to be a car dealer, but the worst time to be in the market for buying a car. CNBC Digital has more. The used car business is booming. According to J.D. Power, sales of used cars climbed 17% above pre-pandemic forecasts in June. And in July, used car inventories dropped 22% year over year, according to Cox Automotive. Services like Vroom and Carvana have made it even easier for people to buy a vehicle in the age of social distancing, with services that allow customers to buy and sell completely online and with no contact delivery. These services also offer seven-day return policies that allow ample time to try out a car. In fact, Vroom CEO Paul Hennessy said the company was having a hard time even keeping its inventory. Yeah, we have the highbrow problem of actually being unable to serve current demand, so we are sprinting towards uh, growing our inventory and listing that inventory. As aspiring car owners clamor for used vehicles, prices are soaring. Prices are up across the board when it comes to used vehicles, but especially for certain models that are in super high demand. We're talking about pickup trucks. Those are red hot right now, as are crossovers and SUVs. The U.S. has moved into a market where people want to sit up higher. They want more utility in their vehicles. They want a sports utility vehicle or a pickup truck. 
People are scooping up vehicles left and right, even in crowded cities like New York, in hopes of avoiding mass transit. This is Alham Ateazar. She's an animator for CNBC Make It. We live in New York City. You don't, you you take subway, Uber, wherever you want to go. So you're not going to need a car that much. It's expensive to keep it. All these things. But like I said, but when the pandemic started, I'm like, we need a car. We need a per personal car. So something that um, we can just go around safely because it's not safe to get in Uber. It's not safe to take subway, you know. Elham and her boyfriend spent $16,000 on a 2016 VW Jetta GTI. It's really good going like over the weekends, getting out of the city. Like we've been going to beach a lot. Uh, we like we went to Catskills. Just getting out of the city, camping. It's it's great for that kind of, like that kind of stuff, and that's what we mainly we use it for. One data point perfectly contextualizes just how intense the demand is in New York. In June, dealerships across the country saw an 8% spike in walk-in customers compared to 2019, according to Cars.com. Dealerships in New York City specifically saw their walk-in businesses jump a staggering 38% in the same time frame. And there's a lot of potential customers up for grabs. More than half of New Yorkers don't own a vehicle. But with outdoor dining, pedestrian paths, and other social distancing measures setting up shop in Manhattan's 102,000 on-street parking spaces, there may be little room left for all these new vehicles on the city streets. Okay, time for today's numbers round. We'll kick it off with 52. McDonald's is facing a new lawsuit, this time by 52 black former franchise owners who are accusing the company of denying them the same opportunities as white operators. The plaintiffs claim McDonald's directed them to economically depressed and dangerous areas where they were guaranteed to fail because of low volume sales, plus high rent and operating costs. The suit was filed earlier today in federal court. The plaintiffs operated more than 200 McDonald's locations and say they lost between an average of four and five million dollars per location. Next, 1,999. Samsung just unveiled an update to its first foldable smartphone in the form of the Galaxy Z Fold 2. The phone comes with a slew of new features, but the most important one? Samsung replaced the plastic screen that was on the previous Fold with a new flexible glass. That means a more durable phone that should hold up better than last year's model, which was notoriously prone to phone-destroying display damage. The Fold 2 goes on sale on September 18th for $1,999. And finally, 98. We have new details about Walmart's latest attempt to take on Amazon. Starting September 15th, it's rolling out a new membership program called Walmart Plus for US-based customers. It's basically just Amazon Prime. It's roughly the same cost, $98 a year compared to Prime's $119 annual membership fee. It gives you unlimited free delivery on 160,000 items, including groceries. But there are a few big differences to Prime. To get that free shipping, you have to spend at least $35. And with Prime, there's no minimum spend. There's no Prime video equivalent. However, there are perks that Prime doesn't offer. You can use Walmart's Scan and Go app to skip the checkout line in stores. And maybe more importantly, Customers get discounts on gasoline at Walmart supercenters. That's it for After Hours, but before we go, here's one more thing to keep an eye on. We are on TikTok Watch. As CNBC reported yesterday, the news about who's buying the crazy popular social media app could come any day now. Microsoft, Oracle, and even Walmart are all in the running. Get up to the minute developments on that story by going to CNBC.com and downloading the CNBC app. We'll be back here at our home office this Thursday, so be sure to catch us then.